Hey, my friend, welcome to the, this video on time and sales tape reading. So as you can see, we've got our e-minis up here and we're using futures today. So uh, this is time and sales, not to be confused with the order book, which can be used with stocks, not level two, not level three. Um, if you're not sure how to get the time and sales window, contact your charting platform. Okay, now, so what we've got is a two-minute e-mini chart up here. You can see we put in a um, resistance level there, kind of a double top. And over on the right, I have my, I've got my time and sales window. Two things that we're looking at here. So, number one, we've got two bearish signals on there. Number one is you'll see the block. It says block. It's kind of cut off there, B-L-O and a half of a C. So that's a block trade, and I have my block trade set for 100 contracts or higher. And then below that, you'll see we have, well, we've got those in red, and then below that we have some magenta numbers. And what that means is there's been some slippage there that people have been aggressive in selling. They didn't hit the um, side of the market they wanted to, and they got at least a pip or a, a tick of slippage there. In this case, since we're talking about uh, futures contracts, and so that shows aggressive selling. And again, there's nuances to this, but that's basic interpretation of how we look at it. Okay, so as we're looking at this. Um, you can see we've got some green orders coming in, um, some buying, some selling, etc. But um, another thing that I want to point out is I have filtered my TAM at sales window. So you'll notice that the smallest number there is 20, 20 contracts. Now there's four columns. So the left column is time. The second to left column is the price, which something was bought or sold, uh, whether it hit the bid or the ask specifically. And then the third column is how many contracts. And then the fourth one is whether it's a block trade or not. And block trade again, you can adjust that however you want. I've got it set to 100 contracts. So I have set mine also with another filter where the only uh, time or the only sales that show up are 20 contracts or more. So the idea there is to see, okay, uh, what are the big dogs doing? What are the, not necessarily the huge whales. So I've got two levels of filters that I'm using here. One is I'm filtering out uh, any buys or sells that are less than 20 contracts because I want to really track the, the bigger money, people with bigger accounts with the kind of idea that the big money is the smart money. And then the really big money is 100 contracts or more. All right, so those are the two levels that we're measuring here. So we're not seeing anything at all that's under 20 contracts, no orders, and then we're marking those that are 100 or more. And I just see we had another block trade come in at 101, 101 contracts, and that um, is a green order. So you could assume that that's kind of a buy. Now, again, this, there's nuances to this stuff. So you could think, oh, well, they're buying, but not necessarily. Maybe they're covering a short, or maybe they just got hit on the other side of the market. So the one thing I want to do, what, do want to say about time and sales is that it is one of the more challenging ways to trade. It is a type of tape reading, but um, it's not the easiest thing to do. There are nuances that you've got to look for, and I consider it more advanced, and you've got to have a lot of experience under your belt. Plus, it can change very, very quickly. So this is not really for beginners, in my personal opinion. It's something that has to be learned over time, kind of get a feel for it. And we're really looking for, again, preponderance of the evidence. So just because you get a big order coming in doesn't mean, oh, the market's going to go up. Hey, we got a, you know, 101 contracts here. Therefore, the market's going to go screaming up. No, 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 no. Hey, I wish it was that easy. Right? We just had 120 contracts and uh, you know, the market didn't go down dramatically. So we got a little battle of the war. But right now, looking at the balance of things, I would say that we're bearish here. Why? Because we've got, um, we got our black trade red. We got um, a little slippage going to the downside. How much evidence is that? Not a whole heck of a lot. All right. So now and then the other thing you want to watch is the speed of how fast the time and sales is scrolling. Now, it's not scrolling very fast. So oh, we just had another block order come in at 122. Got another magenta um, line there. So, OK, again, bearish sentiment. Notice the bars are moving up. So this is what's kind of cool, right? We got a green bar 
but we've got some short selling signals on the time and sales. So that's what where this can be a bit at times a leading indicator. Oh, the other thing we want to look for now we're getting more and more red. So the more red you get, um, the more that we're looking on the bearish side. So those are the three elements really block trades, um, slippage and a more red in ratio to green. Again, this is more advanced uh, technique. If you want something that's easier to read, um, go ahead and send me an email at Barry at topdogtrading.com. I'll be happy to share with you my cycle indicator. That's like anybody can read that. That's <laughs> makes it real easy, real simple, a lot simpler than reading time and sales or reading tape. Um, another factor we want to look at is, as I was started to say, to the speed of the orders coming in. Now, they're not coming in very fast. So the velocity of the market is slow. It's actually picking up a little bit now. And that's another thing you want to look at. So the scrolling, the speed of the scrolling is the velocity of the orders. The faster they come in, uh, the more bullish or bearish that we consider it. Okay. As you can see here, I just edited this so that we could go ahead a little bit because there weren't really any great signals there and I try to keep these videos to about 10 minutes. So we continue to meander down, right? There's not a big vertical dramatic um, knife fall, so to say. Um, and that's again because, well, there's not a velocity, not a lot of velocity in the, the scrolling. But okay, here we go. We've got more red than green. And now we've got some more magenta um, selling here. So people are willing to take a little slippage or they're getting a little slippage, whether they're willing to or not, but um, depends on whether they play, place market orders, limit orders, let's move ahead. Okay, so as we move ahead again, now we notice that we're coming into a support level, the blue level below hand. And this is another thing I wanna share with you about time and sales. You don't just look at time and sales, you really have to look at a chart with that, although I will tell you, I have talked to traders who don't. Um, I can't imagine doing that, but I have heard of some traders who don't even look at charts. They just look at time and sales. Okay, well, that's awesome. Good for them. Um, for me, you know, that doesn't work too well. I can't do that. So maybe they're more skilled at time and sales. Well, I'm sure they are more skilled at time and sales than I am. So for me, I'm a very visual person. I'm not a numbers guy. I'm a visual guy. So I like charts. So I want to look at time and sales in conjunction with support resistance. And I like to see those support resistance levels on my chart. So you see the blue horizontal line below. That's what we're looking at now and see what time and sales does when we come into that level. All right, so now I'm obviously moving ahead. We still haven't reached that level. We got block trade coming in uh, at 100 uh, contracts. We've got uh, more red than green. We've got two magenta uh, cells down there. So overall, still bearish. Again, doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot yet. Uh, I would expect us to reach down to the support level. What we want to look at is, well, what's going to happen when we hit that support level? Because one of the big questions people have, and rightfully so, is, hey, how do I know if a support line is going to hold the market, going to bounce off of it, or if the market's going to slice right through? The last time we hit that blue line below, you could see over on the left side of the chart, those green bars uh, around 11.55 or so, the market just sliced right through what was then resistance, right? So what I would expect to see in time and sales then is just a lot of green prints, maybe some block trades that are green, uh, maybe some lime green. I use lime green for when they get some slippage to the upside. They're just sliced through. So resistance really didn't mean anything. Market did not consider it. And so we're looking for the energy of money flow as we come into support resistance to help us to determine whether support will hold or whether it will not hold. And that's how we use the two together. All right. So, um, again, just had a little magenta print here. And uh, we're coming down into the support level, as mentioned and as expected. Fine. We got our block trade there. Notice we're getting some green. That's not surprising. People see this support level, so there's going to be some buying there. That should not worry you. That's normal. Uh, still, velocity of this market's just really slow today, so that's not really helping us at all. Uh, normally, that's one of the key factors that I would look for is how fast that time and sales window is scrolling. Yeah, we're not getting that. 
So this really is a, uh, a little more difficult market to read. Sig uh, the signals are not as clear, in other words. So I would want to see a fast scrolling time in sales to give me real confidence here. But okay, so we're getting some green again, not to worry too much. Um, we uh, again, that's expected could be profit taking. Right. People could have been short from that previous high from the blue line above where we had that little double top and people are short and now they're just covering the shorts. So you don't have to um, you can't assume that that's just people you know, really with a bullish sentiment you might just be saying, hey, I made some money, going to take my profits here. And therefore, um, that doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. That's where the part of the interpretation comes in. Uh, it'd be nice if they just told us, here's what we're doing. Well, no, of course, they're not going to make it that easy for us. Okay, so now we're um, slicing through this resistance or the support a little bit, just a little bit. And now this is the key point. Now's where we want to really watch this puppy dog and see what's going to happen. So we just had a bunch of red prints come through, um, which is, you know, not good for the bulls, right? If you got a bunch of red prints coming in at support, well, that's not what we would expect if it's going to bounce off the support level. Uh, we would expect more green to come in. We got a preponderance of red still. So this is a bearish sentiment so far. Uh, we'll see if we get any block trades here. See if the um, time and sales scrolls faster. And right now, oh, there's bearish signals again, magenta. So, yep, we're getting bearish. So it's looking like it might slice through and go to the downside. More red prints. And, um, yeah, not looking good for it to bounce off of here. Oh, wow. There, see how we just got a boom, a little explosive energy there. So, uh, yeah, so we're breaking through. By the way, I've got a free gift for you. If you want to learn more about uh, trading, then uh, feel free to uh, request my uh, rubber band trade. You can see the logo up there in the right-hand corner. Click on that. Be happy to send you a complete trade called the rubber band trade. It's a great trade. I take it all the time, and it's yours for free. Mm -hmm.